This is Aaron with Bible Review Channel, and we're going to be talking about the best Bible, best reference Bible, the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. This Bible has been around since 1908. A lot of people, when they look at this Bible, they don't want it because they think it's too confusing. But I'm going to show you how to use this and show you that it is a lot easier than you think. In fact, when you get into the Thompson, you're going to see that you can use it if you just want to read the scripture and that's it. Or if you want to dig deep, deep, deep. Now, one of the biggest things about the Thompson Chain Reference Bible, as you're going to see, is there is no commentary. So there's not going to be a running commentary that tells you exactly what the scriptures mean. Now, a lot of people want that, but for serious students of the Word of God, you're going to want to dig a little bit deeper. One thing about this Bible that is a philosophy of it is the best commentary for Scripture is other Scripture. And I have a general rule that all your belief in God, your doctrine, comes from Scripture only, taken in context, compared with other passages of Scripture. So we're going to look a little bit about this Bible and how it's used. Now, I'm not going to go into every single help and how they use it, but mainly the chain references. We're going to be using an example, maybe two. I'm also going to show you the new book, Introductions, which is really cool because it breaks a lot of information down for you about that book. And you could use it in a lot of ways. But you can use this if you're doing family devotions, if you're doing a home Bible study, home church, if you're a Sunday school teacher, if you're a pastor, and if you're in a Bible college, it is invaluable. So let's look at a couple things. So let's look at Psalms. But just the Psalm itself, you're going to have the authors of the book, date written, purpose, to whom written, main themes, keywords, key verse, and then a synopsis of the book. And so it breaks it down even further. It gives you some things about different topics. Each psalm is arranged under some topic, which appears prominently in it. So you got humans, exaltation of chapter 8, sinfulness of chapter 10, chapter 14, 36, 55, 59, and others. The worldly and the wicked contrast with the godly, chapter 1, chapter 4, chapter 5. A lot of great information here. Religious experiences, worship, chapter 43, chapter 84. I mean, just a ton of good information. The Word of God, chapter 19, chapter 119. Messianic Psalms, prominent people. And then you have major chains. So you have a lot of these major chains. So you can go in the back, and I'll show you that in a moment. Well, like, well, let me just show you one. Love of Word. So it's chain number 420. Now, your Thompson Chain Reference Bible... ends right there. That is the end of Revelation. Look at all this. Look at all this. This is just the topic references, the index to them, and all your helps. So we were going back to 420. So back here is your index. Now, if you don't know what you're looking for at first, you can actually look at your alphabetical index. And that I have the list of topics and the index for where you found it. Remember, we were looking at love of the word. So you see love. And let's see at the top of the page. So you go down here. And a lot of different subtopics of the word love. So let's keep going. Love of word, 420. So you go back to 420. All right, so we're here, 420, and here you go. Love of word, love by the saints. Now, you have references in black and references in red. So what's the difference? Well, here it is. If it's in black, it will have the chain and the chain reference topic. But it won't have a chain that will take you to the next passage. If it's in red, that means it's a part of the chain will take you to the next verse. And sometimes... They'll have it printed in the back here as well. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's look at Psalm 1, verse 2. Psalm 1, 
verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. You see over here, love of word, 420. So that lets you know that the topic is 420, and you'll find more verses referencing the love of word. So once again, let's look at Psalm 119, verse 47. So here, and I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. A little sidetrack here. A lot of people act like you're not supposed to love the word of God. You're supposed to love God, but not his word. Yes, we are supposed to love his word because you cannot separate God from his word. Simple. So you have here, love of word. That's the topic. Then you have the number 420. And then you have the next passage from where you see that verse. And we're going to see that here in a moment. So Psalm 119, verse 72. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Right here, love of word, 420. Next one is 119.82. Well, we happen to be on that same page. 119.82. Mine eyes fell for thy word, saying, When wilt thou comfort me? Love of word. The next one. Psalm 119.97. So it's chaining the verses together. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Love of word. 119.113. You see, it's chaining them all together. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Love of word. 119.140. And so we're over here. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. That's one of my favorite verses on the word of God because it's very pure. And that shows we are not to doubt God's word. And right there, love of word. And so you just keep going. So let me go back to the chain references, 420. So you see what I did is we were looking at the red ones. You know, you'll see some other ones that next to it, it'll have the topic and the topic number, but it won't have the chain. Now look down here. Now this is what's really cool about this Bible as well. So you see these chains? That's the ones we read. You ended on 119, 140. But you just can keep going on until you get to the next part, the Word of God. And then it has different ones just about the Word of God. That is the strength of this Bible. So let's just take a look at another one. Now, once again, you could just read the Bible through. And you can write notes. You can underline verses. And that is what a lot of people do. Let's look at a familiar psalm. Psalm 23. So this is how the chain reference works as well. Also, if you want a, a, just a good, really, outline of what the chapter is about. And we're just going to look at the outline. So you're reading along, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. David, that's who wrote it, Psalm of David. Christ's shepherd, God's sheep, providence, divine supply, spiritual rest, Christ the shepherd. That is, look at that, that's one, two, three, four, five Six studies that you can do from verse 1 of Psalm 23. That means you could go deep. You can go deep in God's word and find the treasures that's in there. So let's just once again look at this. This Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Christ shepherd. And you have the three, two, six, four. And what this shows is it's the first entry of Christ shepherd. I look at that in a moment as well. So 3, 2, 6, 4, but the next verse, oh, Psalm 23, verse 2. It's, and it, it might be the words, it might be the thought. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Well, we're in verse 2, and they try to make the chains as close to the verse as they can. So it shows the next part we're supposed to go. Verse 2, Christ shepherd, 32, 64, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. 
So let's look for it. So right around that verse, I'll be close to it. Christ shepherd, 32, 64. Next is John chapter 10, verse 11. And this is Jesus speaking. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And then there it is again, Hebrews 13, 20. So once again, you're just following the chain. And you can write your thoughts out on that verse, how it makes you feel, what's it remind you of, how God shepherds you, how he leads you. So you could do all kinds of things from this chain. So we're going to go to Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Now, 1 Peter 2.25. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. 5.4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Amen and amen. And it just keeps going. And if you follow it to the end, you're going to see something when the chain ends. Revelation 7, 17. And this is what I'm talking about. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Christ shepherd. Notice something. There's a square. That means that's the end of of the chain you were at. And I didn't point this out earlier, but right there, Christ Shepherd, it's a sideways triangle. That means it was the beginning of the chain. So we covered all the scriptures about Christ being the shepherd. And if you want to check it, or maybe you don't want to go through the chain, you just want to, I don't want to kind of just go to where the list is. Christ Shepherd, 3264. 3264, Christ Shepherd. Psalm 23, 1, the red ones is the ones we followed. It's the ones we looked up. But notice, oh, notice, there's other ones. Psalm 80, verse 1. So these are other verses that talk about Christ's shepherd, but it don't have a chain. So let's take a look at Psalm 80, verse 1, and see how that looks. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock. Thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Christ shepherd, once again, that just shows you the topic and the topic number, 3264. And right back here, now it's going to print usually the ones in red, but sometimes it's going to print the ones in black as well. I mean, you have that, you have that one we read, that one we read, but this one's in black. But they print it out back here as well. That is how the chain reference work for the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. This is an invaluable wealth of information, and it changes to maps, changes to different things. Jesus and his hour upon the cross, Jesus' post-resurrection appearances. And also, remember that number one that we saw? Well, that's general references. 3264, and it had a number one there. Now, watch this. Christ Shepherd, ooh, now you'll have a whole nother group. Number two, as guardian of the flock. Christ Shepherd, God's sheep. Christ Shepherd, sinners regarded as lost sheep. So it is just chaining you to some great things in the general for shepherds. I do want to take a look at this one and see if it has a number two. 3265, 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. All right, here it is. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Christ Shepherd, number two. And that changed that one, 3265. As guardian of the flock. This is one of the best Bibles. It is one of the best Bibles when it comes to References is one of the best Bibles when it comes to just chaining references and teaching you the Word of God from the Word of God. I encourage you, and I do have an affiliate link in the video description, so if you want to pick one of these up, 
They do offer them in, this is the goat skin, but they offer them in other covers and they are cheaper as well. This is probably the most expensive Thompson they have out there, but it is an invaluable Bible. And if you're in a market for a great Bible that you want to read, you want to do referencing, you know, and it, I mean, it's a hefty Bible. So it is a heavy Bible. This is 36 GSM paper, which means it is the thickest European premium paper. The other covers have 30 GSM paper, so they're gonna be thinner and lighter as well. So a little bit easier to carry around. Hey, if you like what you watch, hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications of other videos. Thank you for watching. God bless.